Hello, I am a teacher, but I understand that a teacher is no longer the king in the classroom. The radical developments in pedagogy and the works of political thinkers, psychologists and educationists during the last century have uh, redefined the roles of the teacher and the learner. And there were many of them. Uh, there was John Dewey, uh, there was Jean Piaget, Lev Vygotsky, Paulo Freire, Bell Hooks, and many others who worked on the foundations laid by these thinkers. And their work has, uh, I believe, considerably altered the landscape of education in this century. We can no longer think of a teacher-centered classroom as the norm or of the teacher as the repository of all knowledge, a kind of know-all, definitely not. We know that knowledge is not something that can be transmitted or passed on from the teacher to the learner, like some magic potion perhaps. Knowledge is actively constructed by the learners using the tools of learning and interacting with the environment in which they can be aided by teachers uh, or more experienced learners or more competent peers, people who are like them. A learner, if you take a learner, uh, however young he or she is, uh, is not a blank slate, something uh, in which you can write whatever you want. Uh, we are often used to think of uh, books as the repository of knowledge, something, uh, a, a series of uh, books, collections of books in which knowledge is stored. Uh, we don't accept this anymore. We think of books or, uh, or audiovisual material for that matter as only uh, data banks, something uh, in which you can store your data which can be processed, which can be uh, used to construct knowledge. Uh, it's not like uh, what you do when you deposit money in a bank. Knowledge is not something which you can deposit like money. It doesn't accumulate in your account. Yeah, of course not. It exists as structures in the brain, something which is constructed in the brain. And uh, any theory which links knowledge to uh, something that you can accumulate, which thinks of knowledge as something that you can accumulate, uh, is only uh, going back to a period of time in which rote learning or learning by heart was the norm. Uh, people just used to uh, memorize bits of information uh, only to reproduce it later. Uh, we no longer think of this as an acceptable method today. The structures of knowledge of course can only be conceived as wholes. There are no bits of structures which you can uh, use as uh, countable material. These structures are holes and if you add, if you construct new knowledge, what happens is that the existing structures are modified so that it becomes, uh, the structures become new altogether. There are, they are new structures, not structures uh, in which uh, items accumulate. Today we talk about the constructivist method of teaching and learning. By this uh, we don't mean that the teachers are silent spectators as uh, many people think, uh, who just allow things to drift, uh, leaving everything to the students, not at all. The teacher is actually a facilitator who intervenes uh, actively, not just uh, watching what is happening but actually intervening in what is happening in the classroom and creating optimal conditions for learning. In fact, the new teacher is entrusted with more responsibilities than the old uh, and uh, the teacher not only facilitates learning but also analyzes the process of learning, uh, trying to find out what is actually happening, gathers, puts together learning materials of all kinds for his or her students. Uh, supports learning, what is called scaffolding. Scaffolding uh, the learning of uh, the students in his or her classroom. Uh, picks out uh, poor or weak learners, uh, assesses their uh, learning speed, the amount of learning that has taken place, all kinds of things. In fact, uh, you find the teacher, although uh, not the center of activity, but very much 
uh, at the center of things very much uh, in the thick of things morning yeah we were supposed to discuss something today do you remember yes okay what are we going to discuss today so we are going to discuss about the role of tea shops in malayalam cinema and the importance of tea shops in uh, earlier days and also the changes that had taken place after the coming of tea shop okay so how are we going to go about it first upon we are going to uh, watch two video clips about the tea shop okay so who's going to present it would you do it yes ah fine come on go ahead i'll do watch it okay good morning friends how are you fine fine uh, we all know that we are going to discussing about tea shops in malayalam cinema we are going to discuss about the role of tea shops in malayalam cinema and the importance of tea shop in earlier days then first of all we can watch two film two video clips about the tea shop okay നിന്റെ കരുതാവോണ്ടൊന്നും പറയാതെ നാലഞ്ച് കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളെ പൊലരണ്ടതാണ് കോന്ത അപ്പൊ ചത്ത പശുവിനെ കരുതാവ് പശു ചാവാലോ തനിക്ക് എന്തായി പോയി കോന്തൻ നമുക്കൊന്നും ആയിട്ടില്ല നിങ്ങളെ പശു ചത്തെടുക്കണേ പാണ്ടം വഴിയല്ലേ വരുന്ന വഴിക്കൊന്നും മേഘുന്നത് കണ്ടല്ലോ മാപ്പിളെ ഇജ്ജെ മുണ്ടാണ്ട് കുത്തിക്കട തുറുവാൻ കണ്ണ ഏള് പശു ചത്തെടുക്കണേ ഏത് നമ്മളല്ലേ അറിയണേ പിന്നെ തന്റെ തലയ്ക്ക് മൂന്നാവർത്തിച്ച ക്ഷീരവലയും കറ്റുരാതിയും പുടിയും ചേർത്തിടണം തല ഉഷ്ണിച്ചു പോയിട്ടോ മനസ്സിലായിണ്ടോ ഈ സിഗരസ് ഒന്നും നിങ്ങളുടെ ബസ് ഇരിക്കൂലേ എന്താ മാപ്പിളെ ഇങ്ങനെ പറയണ ഇതൊന്ന് നോക്ക് ചാത്തപ്പ പശു ഉണ്ട് ഈ അരിക്കാടിന്റെ ഉള്ള അതിനല്ലേ കൊടുക്ക നമുക്ക് അതൊന്നും കുടിച്ചു വെച്ച് നമുക്ക് നായരെ ഓ ലേശം പഞ്ചാരോ അത്രേ ഉള്ളൂ ആ തൊള്ളന്റെ കഴിപ്പ് കാരണം ഇച്ചിരി പാലും വീട്ടണം ആര് നമ്മുടെ പോസ്റ്റ് വന്ന് വരും വരും കുത്തിരിക്കുന്നു നമ്മുടെ മാസ്റ്റർ ഇതിലേ കടന്നുപോയോ അത് ശ്രീധരൻ തന്നെയല്ല അതെ കടുപ്പത്തിലൊരു ചായ മേട്ടിൽ ഇപ്പോ സ്കൂളിലെ കുട്ടികളുടെ ജവുമ്മിൽ ഇങ്ങനെ പിടിച്ചു പിടിച്ചു കൊണ്ട് കുത്തിരിക്കണുണ്ടാവും ഒരു കത്തുണ്ടായിരുന്നു അല്ല ഈ സ്കൂൾ മേട്ടർമാർക്കും കൂടി ആളുകൾ കത്ത് എഴുതുന്നുണ്ട് നമുക്ക് മാത്രം ഒരു മണിയോർഡറും കൂടി ഒരുത്തിനെ അയക്കൊണ്ടില്ലല്ലോ ആലോചന വന്നു അല്ല പോസ്റ്റ് മാനോ നിങ്ങളുടെ കയ്യുമ്പോ വലിയ ആളില്ലാത്ത മണി ഓർഡർ ഉണ്ടോ ഉണ്ട് എന്റെ ജീവിതം തന്നെ ഒരാളില്ലാത്ത മണി ഓർഡറാ മേൽവിലാസക്കാരനെ കാണാണ്ട് മടക്കാൻ പോവാ ഏ ചെയ്തോടില്ലേ അച്ചേരിക്കുള്ള നമുക്ക് എന്നെ ഏറ്റെടുക്കാൻ ആളുണ്ടോ നിങ്ങളൊരു കാര്യം ചെയ്യ നിങ്ങളെ മാസം ഇതര മേട്ടറും കൂടിയിട്ട് ഒന്നിച്ച് കൂടണം എന്തിന് അല്ല അയാൾക്കാണ് ഇനി കെട്ടോളില്ല നിങ്ങളെ കെട്ടോളാണ് വെച്ചിട്ട് അയ്യും പോയി ഇവിടത്തോളം നടക്കും അപ്പഴേ ബസ് ഉണ്ടല്ലോ ബസ് എങ്ങനെയാ ബസ് വന്നില്ല രണ്ട് മൂന്നുണ്ട് അപ്പഴേ മൊയ്തു എങ്ങനെയാ ഡൈവർ ആയിട്ടുണ്ടോ ഡൈവർ ഈ ബസിന്റെ കണക്കൊക്കെ കണീഷായിട്ട് പറയണ്ടേ അതിന് നമ്പരിച്ച് നമ്മളെന്നെ വെച്ച് ബസ് ഇപ്പൊ വരും എവിടേക്കാണോ പോയ യാത്ര കുറച്ച് ദൂരത്തേക്കാ എന്നുവെച്ചാല് ഈ ദൂരത്തേക്കോട്ടോ അല്ലേനും ഇത്ര പൂണത്രയോളം ഒന്ന് പോണം ഓഹോ വിശേഷം വിശേഷം ഒന്നുമില്ല എന്നാലും ഒരു ശാന്തി തരാവൂന്നൊരു സംശയം 
Okay, did you enjoy the film? Yes. Okay, the scenes we just seen from the film Neela Quill that released in 1953. That means any of us were never born. Got it. Then, where did the scenes take place? Inside and outside of a tea shop. Then, uh, what is the situation in the tea shop? They are exchanging local news. Local news is exchanging. And where did the scenes take place? Kerala was the early 20th century was a caste and society. Many social reformers are trying to change this condition and many struggles like Guruvai Satyagram, Vaikam Satyagram, Chanar Lala that gives an opportunity to mingle with each other and uh, that belongs to people are dining together and uh, uh, the tea shops are mainly located in village areas. Do you mean to say that the conditions for the emergence of the tea shops were already there when they emerged? But the high bond peoples are not come to ready in the, uh, in the tea shops because uh, they are not uh, like to mingle with lower class people and uh, they keep a distance in tea shop. Okay, we can go through the film. We note that a person in high bond working by the tea shop, what did he do? He did not enter into the tea shop. He tried to keep distance from the low caste people. She said that the tea, uh, high bonds kept distance from the tea shop and uh, that means uh, there is no system of privileges of birth operated. Then how can we introduce a tea shop? Tea shops was a public space where peoples of all castes and communities could assemble as equals. Okay, it is a public space. Then uh, it is comfortable to whom? More comfortable to whom? Low caste people. Yes. That's it. Okay, how does the tea shop look like? The tea shop looks like small hut and it is made up of thatched roof yeah. and there are not more benches, only one or two like and we get, uh, in tea shop we get only tea and snack and we see, uh, we wash the tea shop, we see a shelf and it is made by glass and the tea shop floor is made by mud. That's it, that's how it looks. Is there any labors in tea shop? No, the owner is the labor and the waiter. Well, yes. Okay. then. Uh, what type of pupils assembled the Common pupils like farmers and postmen, that means lower caste people. And uh, tea shop is mainly helpful for the uh, travelers and merchants. We can see, uh, sometimes we can see uh, travelers and merchants in the tea shop. How can it helpful for travelers? It mostly, uh, while they're traveling, Travel, they, they can rest there the, and they communicate to each other. Okay. What are the major things happening though? What they are discussing? People can interact with each other. People read newspaper and discuss about politics, uh, talking about social issues, commonly gossips. Okay. Uh, then uh, we learnt about tea shops and how it looks like. Then we, then we want to know about the social functions happens there. So what are the social functions of a tea shop? The main functions of the tea shop was the freedom of movement and the economy based on money. The freedom of movement means that uh, the people could, uh, all people could go there without any restrictions at any time if they had the money. Uh, by, and it was a great help for the um, merchants and travelers uh, in the tea shops. Uh, when they are traveling, they, before the tea shops come, they used to stay in other people's house with their own cast and from there they will take rest and eat food. But now from the tea shops they could eat, the, eat food from there and take rest if they had the money. Um, and it was a new experience for the people here um, by uh, giving money and eating food. Before uh, emerging of the economy based on money and freedom of movement, what method they used for the exchange of goods? Before the money based economy, uh, people used the Barna system. Uh, that means exchange of things. If they wanted rice, they will give sugar and buy rice. Mm, now it was uh, money, what they used for the transactions. We already seen uh, what a tea shop look like. Then uh, I think there were other public spaces like tea shop, uh, the pupils uh, assembled together. Yeah. Can anybody see such type of public spaces? Yeah, barber shop, uh, railway station, library and under of the huge trees, toddy shops also. Yeah, of course. The toddy shop was also a public space. People did go to toddy shops in those days. They all said that uh, uh, the tea shops and the public spaces in earlier days. 
but uh, it is still now on, also there is public spaces like tea shop where uh, pupils assemble together like uh, residents association clubs uh, social welfare committees swayam sahaya sangams kudumbasri etc the but it is uh, different from tea shop it means uh, the tea, in tea shops uh, the there is full freedom to us uh, we can go uh, any time we can eat anything there is no membership uh, in a tea shop but in uh, kudumbasri like that associations uh, the we want a membership there is no freedom to uh, get in any time for any uh, any needs yeah i think uh, for sana made it very clear that there are many other public spaces today apart from uh, restaurants in fact the tea shop traditional tea shop has almost disappeared from kerala's landscape uh, although we have public spaces probably uh, none of them compare with a tea shop we already know about the atmosphere that prevailed in a tea shop we also know that perhaps the conversation in a tea shop was uh, tastier than the tea and snacks okay now uh, what i wonder is uh, why did tea shops disappear from our landscape what happened it was not profitable for the modern people no one is ready to take hard work on the basis of tea shop and and no time to take on tea shop and Sorry. everyone is busy now any other reason uh, all are busy ah. uh, no time for uh, mingle with each other okay. and share the news okay and uh, all want to money all want money more than uh, mingle with each other okay okay that's fine right. so uh, we have had a very fruitful discussion yes you have talked about tea shops their emergence uh, the reasons for their emergence the traditions in which tea shops emerged what a tea shop looks like what do you get in a tea shop social what functions. do people do there what are the broader social functions of a tea shop uh, why did tea shops disappear from our landscape have any other public spaces taken their place all these things we have discussed so we had a very fruitful discussion yes. i should thank you all for this uh, very participative uh, discussion that we have here and here i hope we we'll have more such discussions in future thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.